Hi, good morning and welcome to this new class again. And as you know, we are dealing with different type of the energy sources. Uh, we saw in the last class about petroleum, about coal, about natural gas and so on. Today let us see about another source that is electricity. I'm sure you are all very familiar with electricity. Every house has got electric connection and therefore we are using it for different purposes. For cooking we use it, for lighting we use it and we use it as a power for working different engines, machines and so on. So you are all very familiar with this electricity and we may be finding difficulty one day electricity supply is there. We know how hard life is everywhere there is darkness and our, all our plans may not be going on smoothly and so electricity is one of the major sources of energy for as long as the people in the village or in the uh, household is concerned so let us see about it you can take page number 60 60 so electricity has such a wide range of applications in today's world that its per capita consumption is considered as an index of development. So more and more people have got the electricity connection and in this world or in this present age more people are getting electricity connection and the consumption that every family or every place or every house has got this electricity connection therefore it is considered as a sign of development more people get the electricity connection that shows there is more development and it is a sign of development and electricity is generated mainly in two ways by running water which drives hydro turbines to generate hydroelectricity so one way of producing electricity is by water we turn the water or make the water flow into electric turbines and by the force of this water heating the turbine the turbine starts running and from there electricity is produced that is called hydroelectricity hydro means water so water is helping us to produce electricity then second one is by burning other fuels such as coal, petroleum and natural gas to drive turbines to produce thermal power and other source of energy is called thermal source of energy that is we run the turbine with the heat of burning other objects like heat like the coal, petroleum, natural gas and so we burn these things and with the power coming from this burning of this fuel the turbine starts running the first one the turbine is running because of the force of the water in the second case it is running because of the power coming from this burning of the fuels that is why they are called thermal electricity thermal power or thermal electricity so hydroelectricity coming from water and thermal electricity coming from burning of fuels and once generated the electricity is exactly the same so it can be produced with the water it can be produced with the power of thermal or burning of the fuels so but once electricity is produced it is same there is no difference no because once the turbine is start running it is producing electricity there is no difference whether the force that is coming from the water or from the from the fuels that is there is no difference electricity is same then hydroelectricity is generated by fast flowing water which is a renewable resource we already said how one way of producing electricity by fast running water with a high speed water flow and the turbines start running india has a number of multi purpose projects like bakranangal damodavali corporation the Kopili Hydro project etc. producing hydroelectric power. So India has got so many dams are there, hydroelectric projects are there producing electricity. And some of the important ones are, one is Pakhranangal, another one is Damodarwadi Corporation and the second third one is Kopili Hydro project. There are several other ones are there and these are the three important hydroelectric projects in India. Then the thermal electricity is generated by using coal, petroleum or natural gas. 
and the thermal power stations use non renewable fossil fuels for generating electricity so in the fossil that we use the fossil fuel that we use for generating electricity is called thermal electricity and what's the difference between water and the uh, fossil fuels water is a renewable resource water does not get over it is can be renewed it can be reused again and again but the fossil fuels like petroleum coal and the natural gas that is not like that once we use it is getting over it is no more can be used again so one is renewable and another is not renewable and the thermal power stations use non renewable fossil fuels for generating electricity and there are over 310 310 thermal power stations are there in india so a lot of power stations are there in india some are running with the water and some are running with fossil fuels fossil fuels we said we have around 310 power plants are there in india and you can collect the information about the power plants in your state i don't think we have any power plant here in arunachal we are completely depending on others on for hydroelectric power thermal power plants we don't have now let us come to another source of energy that is non conventional so far we were talking about conventional sources of energy now let us go to another type non conventional source of energy non conventional source of energy so we already said what is meaning of non conventional which is not uh not that much in use by the ordinary people so it needs special technique it needs a lot of capital for installment and so on otherwise we cannot install these power plants so first one is let's say the growing consumption of energy has resulted in the country becoming increasingly dependent on fossil fuels such as coal oil and gas so we have been depending on this coal oil and gas for such a long time and rising prices of oil and gas and other potential shortages have raised uncertainties about the security of energy supply in future which in turn has serious repercussions on the growth of the national economy so we know these days we hear the oil prices are becoming higher and higher day by day the government is going on increasing going the government and the oil companies are together deciding to increase the price of the petrol and diesel and the gas every day so if it is going on increasing like this people will not be able to buy and it will certainly affect the economy of the country the vehicles will not be able to run the industries will not be able to run and so on. and it will affect certainly the economy of our country then moreover increasing use of fossil fuels also cause serious environmental problems and also other apart from losing the money we have another problem is that the it will cause environmental degradation because these fossil fuels contain lot of carbon dioxide and as we burn them or as we use them it is releasing this carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and the atmosphere is filled with lot of carbon dioxide then hence there is a pressing need to use renewable energy sources like solar energy wind tides biomass energy and from waste material and these are called non conventional sources of energy so these non conventional sources of energy the one thing is that they are all renewable it does not get over it can be renewed again and again for example wind energy solar energy all these can be used again and again and it does not pollute much the the rate of pollution is also much less when we use this non conventional sources of energy so which are the non conventional sources of energy one is solar energy wind energy tidal energy biomass biomass or biogas then the energy from the waste material so that is the biomass is a energy from the waste material from the 
animal down the waste material everything we deposit in the tank and from there it is gas fermented and yeah it is starting producing gas then india is blessed with abundance of sunlight water wind and biomass so these things are very much available in india like sunlight we are in a region where we receive a lot of sunlight therefore we can easily harass uh, so harness this sunlight and then we have plenty of rivers we have a lot of water bodies and we have a lot of wind certain area is always very windy very strong wind we get therefore we can get wind energy and also biomass a lot of biomass bio things we have with that we can produce gas then it has the largest programs for the development of these renewable energy resources so we have all these available in our country therefore it has got the largest programs we can plan out for a longer period of time and then we will be able to develop all these things and make our country a pollution free and as power sufficient sufficient power we will have so first let us see nuclear or atomic energy nuclear or atomic energy it is not used by common people it is usually by for making weapons atom bombs and so on so it is also can be used for good purpose and it is obtained by altering the structure of atoms so it is atomic energy that means it is getting or it is coming from atoms the atoms the structure is changed you know in the chemistry you study about different structures of atoms every atom does not have same structure they have different so that one by force we change we change it then there is a fusion and lot of energy is produced so when such alteration is made much energy is released in the form of heat and this is used to generate electric power so when they change the structure of the atom a lot of energy is released and that energy is used for producing heat and for producing electric power as well a uranium and thorium which are available in jharkhand and the aravalli ranges of rajasthan are used for generating atomic or nuclear power we can underline what is used for which material is used for generating atomic power so two things uranium and thorium these are the two things used for producing atomic energy and that is found in the aravalli ranges of rajasthan and also in jharkhand then the monoxide sand of kerala is also rich in thorium so there is a type of sand called monoxide sand that is found in kerala and that sand also is containing this thorium in abundance then the another type is called solar energy which are so very famous and some of us already started using this solar energy So India is a tropical country and it has enormous possibilities of tapping solar energy. So why India has got enormous chances of tapping the solar energy? Because India is a tropical country. In the tropical region we get lot of sunshine. And photovoltaic technology converts sunlight directly into electricity. So we keep the solar plate or solar dish on top of the house or anywhere where it will heat the sunlight directly and the system that is used for converting solar light into uh, energy electricity that is called photovoltaic technology you can underline which technology converts solar light into electricity it is for photovoltaic and solar energy is fast becoming popular in rural and remote areas so in the rural area or in the remote area where this uh, electric line cannot reach this solar power is becoming more popular more and more people are using this solar energy and 
Some big solar power plants are being established in different parts of India which will minimize the dependence of rural households on firewood and dung cakes which in turn will contribute to the environmental conservation and adequate supply of manure in agriculture. So if these solar plants are very well made use in the rural areas, in the agricultural areas of our country, then we have several advantages. What are they? So we can reduce. If the solar energy is used for cooking food and making the light, then we don't need to burn petroleum products, we don't need to burn uh, kerosene, we don't need to burn firewood and so on. So it will reduce the environmental pollution quite a lot. We can save a lot of trees if we stop burning firewoods. And then also people, some places people are using dung cakes for burning. Instead of firewood they are burning dung cakes. So if they can start using solar energy, they can spare this dung cake and this dung can be used for garden, for cultivation and we get very good manure. Instead of using chemical fertilizers, we can use these cow dung and other dungs in the, in the garden for cultivation and that way we will get good healthy vegetables or other crops also. So that way different advantages are there. Then, Another one is wind power. Wind. So you know from the wind also we can generate electricity or power. So India has great potential of wind power. The largest wind farm cluster is located in Tamil Nadu from Nagakoil to Madurai. And apart from this, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Gujarat, Kerala, Maharashtra and Lakshadweep have important wind farms. So the greatest or the largest wind farm where lot of windmills are set up. Where is it? It is in Tamil Nadu from Nagakoil to Madurai. From an area from Nagakoil to Madurai, lot of windmills are set up there. That is a largest farm in India, wind farm. So it is not just one windmill is set up, one machine is set up, but several mills are set up and they will be going on rolling all day and night when the wind comes. So that way we can harness a lot of wind and we can produce, convert them into electricity. So there are many states in India which has got this uh, wind farms are there. And Nagakoil and Jaisalma are well known for effective use of wind energy in the country, you can underline, which are the places known for the well use or effective use of wind energy in our country. They are Nagakoil and Jaisalma. These are the two places very well known for effective use of wind energy. Then another one is biogas. Biogas energy. So shrubs, farm waste, animal and human waste are used to produce biogas for domestic consumption in rural areas. Decomposition of organic matter yields gas, which has higher thermal efficiency in comparison to kerosene, dung cake, and charcoal. So how do we produce biogas? So a lot of waste like what is available in our house, in our families, like shrubs, the waste from the farm, then animal and human waste, all these are deposited in the, in the, we can say in the tank, which is made for this producing biogas, and in that tank it gets decomposed and then it starts producing gas. And this gas has got higher capacity for heating up. Comparing to firewood, cow dung, and so on, it has got much more higher capacity. So, if we use this natural gas or biogas for cooking, then our food will get cooked very fast because it has got higher amount of heating energy. And biogas plants are set up at municipal, cooperative, and individual levels. So, it is some places it is used in the municipality level or it is in the cooperative level and also it is in the 
individual level or families also can construct this biogas chamber. Then the plants using cattle dung are known as gobar gas plants in rural India. So in the rural India people where there are plenty of cows, if the farmers have got plenty of cows then by using this cow dung alone we can produce gas. Then it is called gobar gas. If all kinds of thing waste is put there then it is called biogas. If only cow dung is used then it is called gobar gas. And these provide twin benefits to the farmer in the form of energy and improved quality of manure. So in the rural area where the farmers are using this gobar gas, after production of the gas, the waste can be taken out and can be used in the garden. So farmer gets double effect. So from the gobar gas, they can get the gas for cooking and for lighting and also the waste can be reused again in the in the garden as a manure so his cultivation also will improve and his light and cooking system also will improve so he has got double purpose having this biogas plan and biogas is by far the most efficient use of cattle dung so cattle dung is the most efficient thing that is used in this biogas it improves the quality of manure and also prevents the loss of trees and manure due to burning of fuel wood and cow dung kidneys. So, if this biogas is not there, then people will be cutting down a lot of trees for cooking for firewood. Then they will be burning away all the cow dung. So, the farmer will suffer in the garden, there will be no manure and so on. So, if you use this biogas, then you can get back the trees can be preserved and the manure can be got back. You can see in your picture the five gas plants are there, how these tanks, the chambers are made. Then another source of energy is tidal source of energy. Tidal, we already said in the last class, the tide, high tide and low tide. So the machines are fixed there and when the water comes up, water will enter into this chamber and will, the dynamo will start running and that way it will produce. So oceanic tides can be used to generate electricity. Flood gauge dams are built across the inlets and during the high tide water flows into the inlet and gets trapped and when the gate is closed and after the tide falls outside the flood gate the water retained by the flood gate flows back to the sea via a pipe that carries it through the power generating turbine. So, we have to make the time or make the dam and when the high tide is there, the water level will come up and enter into this dam and then it will be blocked and the water will be retained there. And that water will be taken through the pipe and enter into the turbine. Just as we produce hydroelectric power, here the water is there the tidal water because tide is there every now and then and therefore water can be stored there and that water can be directed through the turbine through a pipe that way electricity is produced then in india the gulf of kampat the gulf of kachin in gujarat on the western coast and gangetic gangetic delta in sundarban regions of west bengal provide ideal conditions for utilizing tidal energy. So we have three important places are there or locations are there in India where this tidal energy is produced. Where are they? That is one is Gulf of Kambat, another one is Gulf of Kutch and another one is the Gangetic Delta. These are the three places or locations where this tidal energy is produced. Then <clears throat> another one is geothermal energy. Another type of energy is geothermal. You know thermal means heat, so hot or heat. So geo means earth. So the heat from the earth is made use for 
making electricity that is called geothermal energy so geothermal energy refers to the heat and the electricity produced by using the heat from interior of the earth we have already learned that the deep under the earth it is a high temperature it is getting boiled there it is getting melted there because of the high temperature so making use of that high temperature under the earth we can produce electricity that is called geothermal electricity so geothermal energy exists because the earth grows progressively hotter with the increasing depth so the depth is increasing more and more then the, it becomes hotter and hotter and where the geothermal gradient is high gradient means the slope so where this geothermal slope is very high high temperatures are found at shallow depths so we'll find out where there is the shallow with the high temperatures then ground water in such areas absorbs heat from the rocks and becomes hot so some places you must have seen uh, hot water streams are coming up springs are coming up even there are some places known as garambani and so on so it is because the certain areas of the earth is very hot and if it is a very shallow area then some water sources may be nearby there and that water also becomes hot and then through the stream it is coming out that's why we get hot water from under the earth some places hot water streams are there so sometimes we think it is a miracle and so it is a uh, reason behind the scientific reason behind is that under the earth it is so hot the deeper we go the hotter it becomes and if there is a water stream or water source in that way in that place then naturally water also will become hot because of the temperature and where there is a outlet it will come out then the ground water in such areas absorbs the heat and the rocks and becomes hot and it is so hot that when it rises to the earth surface it turns into a stream so this water is so hot and even when it is coming out from the earth from top of the earth it will be still hot and this stream is used to drive turbines and ele generate electricity so water is hot means what will happen the steam will be there hot steam will be there and that steam is directed to the turbine and the turbine starts running when the steam will go and hit the just like the wind is hitting and the fan starts running same way the steam from this hot water from under the earth it is coming and hitting the turbine fans and the turbine starts running and electricity is produced so very simple then there are several hundred hot springs in india which could be used to generate electricity and two experimental projects have been set up in india to harness geothermal energy one is located in the parvati valley uh, near manikhan in himachal pradesh and the other is located in puga valley in ladakh so we have two special places are there where we are able to generate this geo the geothermal energy one is where one is in ladakh and another one is in himachal pradesh these are the two places where we will find one is in jammu and kashmir and another one is in himachal pradesh so we come to the end of that uh, sources of energy non conventional sources of energy now we have studied that the sources of energy some are can be recycled some cannot be recycled or some can be renewed and some cannot be renewed and most of this fuel energy of your sources of energy they cannot be renewed so how can we do the conservation just as we said in the case of minerals this fuel energy fuels also need to be conserved let us see how is it possible so conservation of energy resources and energy is the basic requirement for economic development and every sector of the national economy agriculture industry transport commercial and domestic needs inputs of energy 
The economic development plans implemented since independence necessarily required increasing amounts of energy to remain operational. And as a result, the consumption of energy in all forms has been steadily rising all over the country. So we know as the country is developing, we need more and more industries, more and more houses are set up, the urban areas are created, the towns and cities are developed, and the more development takes place, the more use of energy is required. Therefore, we need to conserve the sources of energy. We should not simply use and waste it. We should have a very clear plan for the future, that we need more energy for the future, therefore it has to be made available. So that a thought, that understanding should be always there in our mind. And in this background, there is an urgent need to develop a sustainable path of energy development and promotion of energy conservation and the increased use of renewable energy sources are the twin planks of sustainable energy. So we need to think about developing a sustainable plan, how to sustain this energy. If you don't sustain, it will get over and there will be no more available. Therefore, how can we do this sustenance? How can we sustain these sources of energy? That is what we need to think, we need to plan. And there are two methods of using, uh, making it sustainable. How is it? One is promotion of energy conservation. So we need to promote that methods of conserving energy. We need to encourage the people to do the conservation. And the second one is increase use of renewable energy. So instead of using non-renewable energy sources, we need to start using more and more renewable sources of energy like water, uh, sunlight, wind and so on. We should use more and more this and we must reduce the fuel sources of energy like oil, coal and so we have to reduce. That is the, these are the two solutions that are there in front of us. Then India is presently one of the least energy efficient countries in the world. So it is very shameful for us to say that we are least energy efficient. We don't know how to make use the energy efficiently. We are just using casually whatever is available we are just using and finishing it up. Then we have to adopt a cautious approach for the judicious use of our limited energy sources. And for example, as concerned citizens, we can do our bit by using public transport systems instead of individual vehicles, switching off electricity when not in use, using power saving devices and using non-conventional sources of energy, after all energy saved is energy produced. So we can do something in order to preserve or conserve the energy. What is it? First of all, we can start using public vehicles. If you want to go to somewhere, you can go by the public transport is there. The bus may be there, the taxi may be there, we can go by that. So very often we can see people who have got car, they are just taking and travelling alone, nobody else sees them, maybe you just driver or maybe one more person. So everybody is taking their own vehicle and going. So the fuel is consumed and it is producing carbon dioxide, the environment will become hotter and hotter. So if we can, uh, for emergency purpose, if not for emergency purpose, if we can use public vehicles like a train or bus service or taxi service, then we can save a lot of fuel on our own. Then in our houses we can see some places lights are simply burning. Even if nobody is there in the house, we never bother to switch off the light. And some lights or some houses we can see there is no switch at all. Whenever there is electricity available, the light will be burning. So we are wasting the energy. So we need to switch off the lights and other electrical, electrical things when it is not in use. That way we can save a lot of energy. Then we can also use power saving devices. Some of the devices it is consuming less power. So in the modern times we have more flat TV, flat computer 
all those things that is consuming less power if you use that bulky tv which is very big and back side is bulging that is consuming more electricity so also there are washing machines fridges which are all uh, using modern technology and reducing the power consumption so we can use this modern technology and modern gadgets so that the power consumption will be less then we can also use the conventional non conventional sources of energy instead of using more and more petrol and diesel and those things we can start changing into non conventional sources of energy like solar energy wind energy then we will be using less electricity or less coal and other thermal electrical powers we will be using very less so we must start using non conventional sources of energy and at the end we can say if you are following this methods and we can say we are saving a lot and the same goes energy saved is energy produced so we are not able to produce energy we are not able to start hydroelectric power stations and so on that is not possible for us but if we can save one unit of energy it is same as producing one unit of energy if you have saved one unit of energy you can proudly say i have produced one unit of energy so energy save is energy produced so i encourage every one of you as you grow up make a decision in your life that you will use less fuel sources of energy and you will use more and more non conventional sources of energy and also you will try your level best to save the energy to use the devices that are consuming less power and switch off the electrical things when it is not in use and so on and try to be a very uh, great or proud indian by producing it so take that initiative and also encourage others also to do the same and you will certainly find our country is becoming an energy efficient country in the future through each one of you through your own hard work and through your own effort and so on. so i wish you all the best so we have come to the end of this lesson and let us see a few exercises that are given there at the end of the lesson and the first one is multiple choice questions and the question reads which one of the following minerals is found by decomposition of rocks what is the answer decomposition of rocks which mineral is formed the bauxite answer is bauxite second one Kodema in Jharkhand is the leading producer of which one of the following minerals? So Kodema in Jharkhand is producing which mineral? It is mica. They are producing mica. Then the third one. Minerals are deposited and accumulated in the strata of which of the following rocks? That is answer is sedimentary rocks. the first one sedimentary rocks then number 4 which one of the following minerals is contained in the monazite sand the monazite sands are found in kerala and which mineral is there the mineral called thorium which is used for what for the production for the production of what power nuclear or atomic power that is used so the answer is thorium so the rest of the answers i will send it to you in the group you can copy down from the group from the whatsapp group and write well and study well okay and for you homework is there activity is there there's a column is there so the across and down so you find out the words and try to fill up here and try to get the correct words okay that is our homework and you take after writing you take photo and send it to me i will check okay so thank you for listening we'll meet you again bye